Yeah. So today I'm going to be talking about the roundtable that I was a moderator of, which we called Charting a New Course, Elevating Diversity and Inclusion in Children's Media. So as I mentioned, I moderated it. Um, and the panelists were Maria Diaz, Dr. Diaz, who is an adjunct professor here. She's also an executive producer at Nine Story Media. We also had Susanna Beltran Grimm. Uh, she, at the time, was a postdoctoral research associate at Purdue University when I did this in the spring, but she is now an assistant professor. Um, and she previously was an early childhood director at PBS SoCal. And then we had Makeda Mays Green and Colleen Russo Johnson, who work in the digital and cultural consumer insights department at Nickelodeon. And then we also had Meda Tsare, who is the senior director of research at Joan Gans Cooney Center at Sesame Workshop. Okay, so we introduced the panel by talking about the children's media landscape today. So, right now, there is an or recently, there's an increase in demand for greater diversity, representation, and inclusion in children's media to reflect all children's backgrounds and experiences. And children's media plays a key role in teaching diversity, especially as children primarily learn through visual cues requiring characters that reflect their identities. So prior to 2017, only 42% of preschool character TV, TV characters were human, with only a third of those characters representing people of color. So that highlighted the need for more inclusive content. This comes from, I just want to contextualize this, that it comes from a report that was based off of uh, the media landscape of the U.S. and Canada. So progress has been made with shows like Dora the Explorer, Rosie's Rules, Molly of Denali, and Alma's Way, which all feature culturally authentic representation as they involve community collaboration in production. So the primary question of our roundtable was how can we elevate diversity in children's media to make it more inclusive, meaningful, and conducive to fostering positive racial learning experiences for children? Um, and each of the people who I just outlined who were the panelists addressed these um, these four key um, things, it, the first being barriers in building diverse creative teams, uh, the second is the creation of digital content, and the, diverse uh, the third is the diverse representation on screen, and the fourth is innovations in promoting diversity. So all of the different panelists all spoke on the these various topics. Okay, so barriers in building diverse creative teams. So Dr. Diaz spoke about this. She talked primarily about the systematic obstacles that exist when you're trying to build a diverse creative team uh, within children's media. So unconscious biases and systemic inequities uh, that, well, unconscious biases that we all have and also just other systemic inequities that are present, present in um, children's media, of course, affect um, and throw obstacles in your way when you are attempting to do this. And there's also challenges that are tied to production schedules and budgets that also create obstacles. And there's also been this shifting away from diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives in media as those types of programs and initiatives receive less funding. So moving forward, uh, she believes that it's very important to authentically integrate diverse voices into the creative process um, and there needs to be more deliberate and sustained efforts. So moving beyond like symbolic gestures and moving forward by reshaping these power dynamics, these systemic obstacles and inequities um, and biases that prevent us from actually building diverse creative teams when creating authentically cultural, um, uh, culturally and linguistically represent representative media. Okay, so... Um, then next, Dr. Beltran Grimm spoke about producing digital content for diverse families and children's media. So she, as I mentioned, used to work uh, with PBS SoCal. And when she was there, she collaborated with Latina families to design Spanish language digital media. And that project really um, highlighted the importance of involving families in the design process to ensure cultural relevance and to resonate with diverse audiences. And moving forward, she felt that children's media designers must prioritize community involvement, ensuring designs are guided by, with, and for the community. And this is especially crucial for historically marginalized families who don't always have the opportunity to create diverse um, content that represents their lived experiences in these um, in these ways in which they're done in the co-design process. Um, 
And next we had Nikita, who Colleen unfortunately was unable to attend the panel, but Nikita spoke about the importance of diverse representation on screen. So again, she highlighted the fact that there was an, um, an increasing demand for greater diversity in representation and inclusion in children's media to reflect all children. Um, but Middle Eastern, South Asian, and Indigenous characters are, again, the least represented in that report that Colleen had done um, that I mentioned previously. So then moving forward, it's crucial to fill these gaps for providing all children with a sense of visibility and belonging, um, and also exposure to characters from all cultural, racial, and social backgrounds fosters understanding, empathy, and the ability to navigate issues of race and diversity. So it's really important for children to see themselves reflected um, on it, within the media that they consume for you know understanding themselves, but also understanding others in the world around them. Okay. So then recent innovations that are aimed at fostering diversity in children's media. So Dr. Maida spoke about this and she talked about how UNICEF uh, has this responsible innovation in technology for children's framework, which emphasizes the need to challenge harmful stereotypes and depict diverse representations in children's media. And also it emphasizes the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, in promoting children's digital well-being. So moving forward, uh, she works with uh, the Cooney Gantz Center, and she discussed how they have this program, the Wellbeing by Design Fellowship, which is a professional development program for designers of children's interactive media and technology aimed at prioritizing children's well-being in digital environments, and that this interactive media promotes children's physical, mental, and social well-being. So that is how they're aiming to uh, kind of embody this responsible innovation for technology for children framework. So in sum, uh, the roundtable was, it was really nice. We had a lot of different questions. Um, we had, we did the format where we opened it up to questions throughout and a lot of other um, interesting, you know, questions from people at the conference. Uh, allowed us to talk about um, many different things aside from what I've highlighted here, but these were like our main points. So in sum, there's a lot of barriers to creating um, diverse content for kids, even though it is very important. And there are different ways in which professionals within industry and also academia are trying to move forward to continue to create content that is culturally and linguistically authentic, meaningful. And also um, one of the things that emerged is that it's really important to include community um, to include the communities in which um, you are creating this media for within the production and the design, the whole entire process of creating children's media. I think that that is really important. And that was basically the the sum of our panel. Great, Jessica. Thank you for giving us like the, the brief synopsis of this panel. It sounds extremely interesting. So now we're going to leave this time open if anybody has any questions um, for, for Jessica to answer about the, how the panel, you know, went or certain things that she might have run into, difficulties or, you know, positive outcomes. I have a question. Um, so this is my wheelhouse. Did you guys, so I'm trying to understand, did you guys at all discuss like what things are being done to actually, you know, increase diversity or like were there any like examples of best practices of folks who are already doing this? I guess the... I think um, the main the main thing that emerged was one of the best practices for, for creating the content is to involve the communities in which that you are creating the content for in every stage of the production process. So from like the initial idea of creating media to, you know, all the way through. So like if you're, you're focusing on a community, for example, let's say like an indigenous community, you are involving them in every step of the production process. So you have indigenous writers working on your team, you have indigenous uh, artists working on your team, storyboard artists working on your team, animators working on your team. And also, aside from that, but also having um, check like checks and balances where 
there's also a like panel I know in the indigenous community and also in my community you know elders are very important to us so for indigenous led shows and that's true of a lot of indigenous communities that don't want to homogenize us but um, so for shows like Molly of Denali, for example, they have indigenous elders who actually review the scripts. Um, so they have indigenous creators, but they also have these indigenous elders who are actually reviewing the scripts for, you know, are, are these things actually representing situations that we encounter in our daily lives? So those are definitely some of the best practices that were highlighted. And in terms of trying to like your the other part of your question, which like what is being done to, uh, you know, increase representation and what is being done um to move forward, it's yeah, it's really um difficult right now to kind of like implement these things because the one of the things that did come up is the industry is in a little bit of a crisis, uh, with funding being pulled for things like everything, but also you know one of the first things unfortunately that ends up getting cut is like these DEI initiatives or these bringing on people who are consultants that can tell you like these are the best ways in which you said represent media. If you don't have, if you're not creating um, with a team that is from that community, then you can also, another option is you can bring in cultural consultants. But unfortunately, that's like one of the first things that gets cut from like production budgets. Yeah, the work I've done in this space, we will like air different or we'll sh show different families um, different snippets of episodes and act how ask them how they you know sat with the content and it's been very interesting to see you know different communities being like oh we would never make like chili with this or that and things like that but it is a lot of work and does take a lot of time yeah, that's the thing. So unfortunately, those are like always the first types of things that get cut. Also, unfortunately, that type of meaningful research, although we didn't talk about this, but um, that also gets cut too, right? Doing that type of like meaningful research where you're actually engaging with the community in that way as well, where you're you, like, you're, you know, doing the first thing and then you're having the community like review it and they're saying, you know, like, oh, we, we like this, we don't like this, all part of like that collaborative design process. But yeah, like those are also things that then don't happen due to other constraints. Thank you.